Hello and welcome, my name's Jessica Rose. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make some acorn earrings. So this is a really nice wire wrapping project and uh, quite straightforward and easy to do from home without a lot of tools and equipment. And of course you can make it into a pendant as well. Um, once you've got the technique, you can do what you like with it. And I quite like, I just wanted to show you the bicones that I've used, these little beads. So these ones are four millimeters, and I really like the color of these, the dark brown, it looks very acorny. But I did find they're a bit more tricky to work with because you've got a few more gaps in your, in your kind of structure there. Um, so I recommend, if you can, get hold of three mils. These ones aren't quite uh, as dark, but they, they work really well in terms of uh, just having smaller beads basically makes it a little bit more intricate. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I use gold plated wire. So I've got some 0.8 millimeter wire here, which is uh, 20 gauge, which I'm gonna be using to create the structure. And then I've got some 0.4 millimeter, or you could go for 0.6 mil um, for uh, filling in the wrapping. And I've obviously got my little crystals. So these are three mil and they're brownish. <laughs> they're kind of acorny colored, but they are beautiful. And then I've got my plier set. So I might not use all of them, but I like to have a full set of pliers on my desk just in case. So I've got some flat nose pliers, some half round pliers, which are D shape on this side, which I might use if I need to, to create my structure. Then um, I've got my chain nose pliers, which are flat on the inside, pointed on the outside. Um, some round nose pliers, and then also some cutters. So that's the set I normally have on my beading mat. And finally, to make my ear wires, there's a few ways I can do it, but I might have a go with my um, head pin that has a ball end. So I'll show you how to do that at the end as well. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is use my 0.8 wire to create my structure. So I'm just gonna cut a length off and I'm probably gonna cut way more than I need to begin with just so I've got some to work with. But the more you do these, you can get a bit more precise with your measurements. So I'm just gonna snip that off with my cutters. And I want to create my shape. Now, if I'm doing a pair of earrings, I will do two at the same time and I will try and um, shape them together as well. I'm just gonna do one today to show you, but if you're doing a pair, I wouldn't make a whole one and then do another one because it's quite difficult to get them the same. So I would try and shape them together if you can. Um, so I wanna go for a sort of curved effect and this is definitely way too much. I'm just gonna snip that down a bit as well. And I like to do this with a mixture of things. So I'll often just start with my hands, just giving it a real nice curve. And sometimes I can do it all with my hands or sometimes I will use um, pliers or beads. It also depends on the exact shape you want. So that's quite nice. And then I might use a Sharpie, a pen, to kind of give it a bit more structure towards the top. And I'm just crossing the wires over up there. And I do this quite a lot making shapes with wire and it kind of, sometimes it goes really well to plan and sometimes it's a bit more experimental. So I just try a few different things till I get the shape that I want. So I'm now using my half round pliers to just curve the top bit. I'm quite happy with the bottom, but I want to get these sides round as well. And if I'm doing it with two, I'll have a look at my original one and see what areas I might need to work on. You can shape it a little more after you've done the wrap, the initial wrap as well. So if it's not perfect, don't worry. And sometimes I'll bend it in to bring it back out again. And you just want to be careful when you're using your pliers not to disturb the wire too much. We don't want too many kinks and things. This one has not gone quite as smoothly as they normally do, but I would just keep working at it. You can always straighten it out and try again if it hasn't got the sort of shape that you want. And 
Okay, well, we'll go with it. So now when, you, when you're happy with the shape, I'm going to wrap one end around the other and I'm going to pull this top wire just to a 90 degree angle. So it's right at the top. So this is the 90 degrees here and here. And then I'm just gonna wrap this round one more time. I don't need a lot of wraps there, just enough to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna use my cutters to just cut this section off. So always cut down into your mat. And when you're using your cutters, you always wanna use uh, this side, the flat side, as close as possible. If I do it this side, it's got a beveled edge, so it will leave quite a big chunk. So just a little tip on using the pliers. And always when I cut the wire, I'm gonna tuck it in. So I'm gonna get my chain nose pliers and just very gently tuck in that little end. Okay. The next thing I want to do is uh, create a little loop. So I'm going to use my round nose pliers for that. So place them at the top uh, with a little gap at the bottom to allow some room for my wraps. And I'm just going to hold the base here, bend it back slightly and pull over. Then I'm going to go under and I can do one wrap there. And again, because it's quite a thick wire, I don't need to do many wraps when I'm securing things in place. Take uh, my cutters and remember, hold them the right way round to really get in there and cut off that excess again. And always, once you've cut, do a squidge. <laughs> like I say, the technical term. So now we wanna think about the way that we want the, the piece to hang. Um, and if you have a look at the, these ones I made earlier, I actually want the loop facing forwards, not to the side. So at the moment, or the way that I've made it, it's sideways. But if I want it to hang as an earring, I actually want it facing forwards. If I want it to hang as a pendant, straight on a chain, then I want it facing the way that I've made it. So have a think about what you're making and, and how you're gonna want it to hang. So if this is gonna be for an earring and I wanna twist it round, I just pop it in some flat pliers, hold it and just do a little twist. And then I'm happy that it's gonna hang the right way. Now, if it's a little bit wonky like mine is, you can use your pliers to adjust it. So remember with wire wrapping, you are always in charge. If there's any bits you don't like, just go in, neaten them up a bit. Okay, so now we're ready to start doing our wire wrapping with our beads. I'm gonna grab my 0.4 millimeter wire and just a little tip on looking after your wire, they often come in spools like this. You don't want to let go of both ends <laughs> because it turns into this giant ball of mess, which is impossible to <laughs> untangle. I have tried. Um, so always keep one end wrapped and just gently undo the amount that you want. And again, we're working with gold plated, but there's no reason why you couldn't work with other wires like copper or craft wire. Or if you wanted to make more high end pieces, you could use gold filled wire um, or even gold wire. So I want quite an amount of this because I'm gonna do quite a lot of wrapping um, to make my acorn -y effect. And I don't really want to run out halfway through. So if anything, take a little bit too much and uh, you can always cut a bit off at the end and you can always use bits of wire for things. So I like to have a scrap pot by my bench and um, have little bits and pieces for when I need them. So I've got some wire to work with. And the first thing I wanna do is just attach it. So this area here is a really nice place to attach it because I've got 
lots of kind of grooves in between that it can get um, get into. So I'm just going to place it on with a little bit hanging out the end, just there, and I will wrap it around and down. And I want to end my wrap at the base here so that I can start going and wrapping to create the effect I want. So I'm going to cut off this excess in my usual way. Cut and tuck. Maybe cut and tuck is better than cut and squidge. I don't know. You have to let me know. What's the verdict? <laughs> These important things. Um, all right, so now I'm ready to go with my wrapping. So you can either move the wire around or you can move the piece around, whatever's most comfortable for you. Because I'm working with a long wire, I think it's going to be easier to move the piece. And what I'm doing is just going down and I want to keep it as neat as possible, but I'm not going to be a perfectionist because life goes on. I'm just kind of guiding the wire where I want it. I'm holding it quite close to my piece so that I've got nice amount of control and just keep going down until I create my acorny effect, which is kind of covering not quite half of the structure, but probably, probably at least a third, maybe a little bit more. And this is very similar to how you would wrap a briolette, which is a, a teardrop sort of shaped bead. So if you've done briolette wrapping, you'll probably be used to this. And if you get used to this, you'll probably be great at briolette wrapping as well. It's very satisfying, I have to say. As you see it come together, especially in that lovely golden color. So you don't want to use very big or thick wire for this because it would be a little bit challenging and you won't get the same sort of effect which is why I've got this nice thin 0.4 mil wire. Okay, I think we're getting there. I might just do a few more. All right. I'm happy with that. So once I've got enough uh, covered, enough area covered, and it's entirely up to you depending on your design. I'm going to just do a little wrap around one end to kind of hold it in place. So I'm just going to push through. So always with wire wrapping we want to wrap from the base. I wouldn't want to thread it through from the end. I'll just show you like a needle. Not unless I get not unless I have no other option, because if I do that, I have a lot less control and the wire is much more likely to get tangled. Um, and I'm also much more likely to sort of lose the tension in the piece, which is keeping it all nice and neat. So I'm just going to pull it through. Take your time if you're working with a lot of wire. Be patient. It takes a little bit of time. And I'm going to do a couple of wraps here because when I place my bead on, I want to have a little bit of a gap between what I've created and the bead, just so that I can manage that space. So I think I'll do one more and then I'm ready to start adding all my beads. Okay, lovely. So if I bring over some beads to work with, I think I'm gonna start with either three or four beads. So if I bring up, um, the piece that I made earlier, I started with three, then I did, um, so there's three there, then I did four, then three, and then two. So it does depend on your shape, and sometimes it's not perfect to fill every little gap because you're working with the size of the beads that you got. So the smaller the beads, the more it can fill the gap. But every shape is slightly different as well. So I'm going to start with three. I do love making these projects. It's such a mindful activity. You get kind of engrossed in them. Okay, that's perfect. That's a really nice fit. So I'm happy with that. So just hold it in place again and wrap in the exact same way, pushing down. 
And these do get a bit fiddly, especially as we get towards the end, you'll see. But you can always use your pliers if you get stuck, if you feel like your hands are just, sometimes I feel like our hands are just so big when we're making jewelry, <laughs> but it's just because the jewelry is so small and intricate. Down we go. And so yeah, I'm gonna do about three wraps here. It's not, I'm not wrapping this many times because it needs loads of wraps. It's more that I want to kind of get the, get the wrapping, the wire to the place where they're gonna help the beads to sit nice and neatly across the piece without stretching. So there, that should sit quite nice and neatly for my next round. And it's quite nice with the bicones because they kind of have this triangular effect and they should, they should kind of sit in with each other quite neatly. We'll see what happens though. <laughs> so it's either going to be three or four for this round. Let's have a little look and see. It's nice to work with lovely crystally beads as well. Just love the way they shine. If you're a magpie, like most jewelers. So I think this structure is a little bit smaller than the one I made before, and I don't think that four are gonna fit across. So that's fine. So I'm gonna stick with my three. So always just work with the structure that you have. And take that one off. And hold it in place and wrap round. And remember, with wire wrapping, with beading, you are in charge, so you need to tell tell the wire, tell the beads where you want them to go, place them there nicely. Okay, so now I'm gonna add another layer. Now it's interesting with this one, will I fit two more in or just one more in? I think I might be able to fit a two and a one or maybe two twos, but we'll have a little look. So again, this is different with every structure that you make. Um, and if you're making a pair of earrings, that's why we try and make them together so that it can fit as, as symmetrically as possible. So well, that might be all that I can fit into this one. But we'll give it a go and have a little look. Sometimes, sometimes I think we can squeeze one more in at the end. Great, so exactly the same. But now we're getting right to the end. I do need to change my wrapping method because I can't fit my thumb through that little gap. <laughs> um, so this is where we are gonna go to our more sort of sewing method. But because I've got a lot of wire, um, I'm gonna just cut it down a bit because I know that I'm not gonna need all of that and it's gonna make life a little bit easier for me. So just snipped off the end a little bit. And now I'm gonna go in uh, end of the wire first. And I just wanna do it nice and gently so it doesn't knot or get tangled. You can see I've got quite a lot less control, but that's okay, I'll just do it slowly. Hold the beads in place and pull it nice and tight. And don't be afraid to adjust to where you want the beads to go as you go along. Once I've done the first one, it's a little bit easier. I'm gonna go in again. I'm just pulling it through and I'm using my finger just to make it nice and slow. And adjust the beads again. And I'll do one more. And adjust it. 
Okay, and now I'm ready to add my final bead. I think it's just going to be one, it might be two. Let's have a little look. I'm actually going to thread it through one more time. Okay. Pop it back on. Okay, so that looks nice. I feel like I've got good coverage of the whole area there. So I'm going to commit to that and do a final couple of wraps in the same way. So leading first with the tail end of my wire, pulling it through. And then it's this end bit you want to be gentle of for no knots. And because we're using quite fine wire, I want to be careful. I obviously don't want to snap it. It's pretty strong, but I don't want to get loads of kinks and knots in it if I can avoid it. And as always, practice makes perfect. Don't worry if the first one of these is not quite how you want it. Just keep going and it will come. Great, and then once I'm finished with my wrapping, I'm gonna cut and tuck. So just cut the end off. And just use my pliers to tuck that sharp end in. Some flat pliers. There we go. Lovely. And there I have my lovely little acorn. The next bit I'm going to do is create my ear wire for it. There are a few ways uh, you can do this. We actually have a video on creating ear wires if you want to learn more about it. But I'm going to show you how to do it with head pins because I think they look lovely. So I've got, this is a gold plated um, ball ended head pin. So you can buy them like this. If I didn't have a ball on the end, all I would do is create a loop on the end of some wire. And so the next thing I'm going to do is place that in my round nose pliers quite near the bottom. I just want a tiny little loop here. So I wouldn't do it right up this end. I just want a little loop and I'm just gonna twist it all the way around till it meets. Then I'm gonna turn it the other way around, pop it into the bottom of my pliers this time because I want a big, um, a big loop. So I've got that loop facing up towards one side, facing uh, this way, and I'm going to twist the wire the opposite way to my loop. So I'm just seeing the best way for you to see that. I think, yeah, so loops going one way, so I'm going to twist the wire the opposite way so that it goes round and meets the back of that loop. Then I'm just going to take it out of my pliers and you can see the sort of shape we get. Often it's not very flat so I'm just going to, with some flat pliers, just flatten it. And that is a really nice neat little ear wire. Um, you can buy ear wires, you can make your own. This is quite a short one, you can make longer ones. I could also flick the end if I wanted to. So if I was going to flick the end, I would just put it into some chain nose pliers or even you could do it with round nose pliers. Hold the whole thing and just give a little flick. And that's quite a nice thing to do. I also like with my ear wires to use a little bit of a file. Um, so this is a needle file or you can use any any kind of file for this and just go over the end just to make it nice and neat. You don't want a sharp point, but you kind of want to create almost like a dome effect. So I'll just do a slight file around the edge until it feels nice and smooth. Because remember this will go in someone's ear. So 
We want it to kind of feel comfortable for them. So I'll just give them a little file. And then to attach the, um, the acorn, I'm just going to thread it through all the way. And sometimes it's a bit tricky to get it through the last bit. So I'll just use my round nose pliers to just open it up enough to fit it in. And then I'll go in with the round nose pliers and just close that little gap there as much as I can. So it's nice and secure. There we go. Lovely. And that is it. That is the project. There you have your beautiful, lovely acorn earring. I hope you guys have fun making these. Um, you can obviously make earring sets, you can make bracelets, uh, you can make uh, pendants as well. And I think they're just a really cute project, great for autumn, um, just a really nice way to develop your wire wrapping skills, work with the beads, work with the crystals. Do uh, come and share your makes with us. I'd love to see what you've made on the Jewelers Academy Facebook group and you're very welcome there. Also, we have an Instagram account at Jewelers Academy. Feel free to tag us. And if you would like to learn more about jewelry making, check out our other videos. If you enjoyed this project, do give it a like and subscribe to our channel. We'd love to have you as part of the community. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on another video very soon. Bye for now.